call to order. Good evening, I would like to call to order the Winthrop Public School Committee at 6 p.m. We are meeting in the high school as well as on. We will rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. Julie, can you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, the United States of America and to the Republic which it stands, one nation, under God, divisible, divisible, liberty, justice, justice. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Barry? Here. Mr. Bonquari? Here. Mr. Capabianco? Mr. Matucci? Here. Ms. Swope? Here. Ms. Powell? Present. Mr. Perrin? There is no public comment at this time. Okay, uh, we have no delegates and visitors. Um, do we have the minutes? Can I have a motion to approve the minutes from May 10th, 2021? It's approved. The motion. Second. Motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? And I'll ask for a roll call vote. Patty? Ms. Barry? Mr. Bonquari? Yes. Mr. Matucci? Yes. Swope? Yes. Ms. Powell? Yes. Motion on Warren SP W21 20 in the amount of $254,038.82. Motion. Second. Here. A motion from Mr. Matucci, second from Ms. Barry. Any discussion on the matter? Ms. Nari? Yes. Mr. Bonquari? Yes. Mr. Matucci? Yes. Ms. Swope? Yes. Ms. Powell? Yes. Motion passes. Can I have a motion on payroll warrant SPW 21-21 in the amount of $751,991.81? Motion. Motion from Ms. Wolf. Second. Second from Mrs. Berry. Uh, any discussion on the matter? Hearing none, can I have a roll call vote, Patty? Yes, Ms. Barry? Yes. Mr. Bonquari? Abstain. Mr. Matucci? Yes. Ms. Swope? Yes. Ms. Powell? Yes. Okay. Can I have a motion, please, on the budget transferred in the amount of $212,766.38? Motion. Motion by Ms. Matucci? Second. Second. Second by Mrs. Barry? Are there any, is there any discussion on the matter? Hearing none, can I have a roll call vote, Patty? Yes, Ms. Barry? Yes. Mr. Boncori? Yes. Mr. Matucci? Yes. Ms. Swope? Yes. Ms. Powell? Yes. I think there were two payroll warrants. Did they vote on both of them? I didn't see the second one. There's only one, one in my, on my agenda. There might be two in the packet. Okay, I'll just include it in the next one. That's okay. Okay. All right, so the policy subcommittee met tonight. I'm not getting the mail in. Yeah. <laughs> Our first vote was on the math policy. The current math policy allowed us to update based on what the state is doing. So we were able to stay current with the allowing the students to be without masks when they are outside and at events that are outside. However, we wanted to update the policy in order to be not um, to be able to keep up with what the state is doing without having to come back and continually update it. So we have made, um, we would like to update the policy um, that so that when changes are made on the state level, we can quickly re re respond to them and then eliminate it altogether when the time comes. So I 
would make a motion that we um, adopt the pol policy that would um, make us uh, compliant with state guidelines and enable the superintendent to make changes to that uh, according to the state. Second. Is there any discussion on that? Um, I actually have a question. Sorry. Yes. Is this, so this. Um, <clears throat> so so voting for us to be able to follow the state procedure that allow us to make same day decisions without having to go to a vote. So in other words, if Correct. it's a, a mass drop mandate, then we can do the same. Okay, that's great. Exactly. Okay, Hearing none, can I have a roll call vote, Patty? Yes, Ms. Barry. Mr. Boncori? Yes. Mr. Matucci? Yes. Ms. Swope? Yes. Ms. Powell? Yes. Okay, we also discussed our long overdue uh, policy on substitute teachers, which has not been updated since 2005. Currently, we are paying our teachers $70 per day for non certified, 75 for certified, and 100 after day 18. Um, in the policy committee, we discussed a measure that would allow us to eliminate the first two options and go only with $100 per day, um, regardless of number of days in that job. This brings more in line with the other schools and will enable us to actually hopefully find substitutes as we have had a challenge with our current paycheck. Can I have a motion? So I'll make a motion that we eliminate uh, numbers one and two in the policy and keep number three, which we can move to number one if we want to, um, that will be $100 a day for our substitute teachers. Second by Mr. Barry. Um, and a point of order on this, that this will not go into effect immediately. This needs to go through the regular process, which would have us do a full reading of it uh, at the subsequent two meetings. Okay, Mr. Boncori. So is there any discussion on that? Yes, Ms. Quote. Um, first of all, I'm, I don't know why I'm having trouble hearing you all. It sounds as if there's kind of wind coming into the, into my um, speaker, but so, but that's one thing. But uh, my question here is that the substitute professional staff, does that include all teachers and all uh, special needs teachers, all teachers? Or, yeah, right? So, so this, um, this is for substitute teachers that come into our school district to cover for a teacher who is absent for the day. We've had uh, the same amount of pay since 2005, so it's been difficult for us to recruit people to come in uh, to those positions. So this $100 a day would be specific to those people who we're calling in on a daily uh, routine. You may, may be called in on Monday, we may not need you again until next Tuesday. So each day that you come in to substitute is a seven hour school day and you would be compensated seven hours for, you would be comp compensated $100 for those seven hours as opposed to the current uh, price, which is 70 to $75. Is Not there any, any coverage of any position? Is there a limit on the number of days that we could call them substitutes without employing them full time? So there's a limit in terms of, I believe it's in terms of somebody's access to medical insurance. And if you were to have somebody come in on an average that would be considered um, beyond 20 hours per school week, then somebody could uh, request for, make a request to the school department to provide them with uh, health insurance coverage. Uh, we, don't, we have not run into that. Uh, since I've been here, I don't know about the past, uh, but our um, we do a lot of internal coverage, so it's not typical. A long-term sub would be something completely different. So long-term substitute teachers are teachers that we hire for X amount of months. And you know, I'd have to defer to the benefits office at the town hall um, to, to give detail on that. That's something that they typically deal with. 
All right. So that's not the that's not the purpose of this particular policy. Right. 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 So if it turns into a long term um, substitute, then that that falls under a different jurisdiction, essentially. It does in a different in a different uh, amount of money, depending upon how long term that open substitute position is. Sometimes it's a year long position. And if it was a year long position and we hired a certified teacher, um, typically those folks, if they're here for the year, are brought in on a salary versus okay. $100 a day. It just Lisa, you might want to just make sure that we have a timeline on this just to make sure that when they flip from a substitute professional staff employment to this more long term policy, how many days is that and what does that mean? It right. doesn't have to be in, in terms of this particular policy, but it does have to be clarified. Right. So I believe the um, benefits office has that information provides that to any one of the staff members that is hired during the school year. Mike to know what it is, if you let me know, that's fine. Okay, sure. Do we have any further discussion on this motion? Hearing none, Patty, can you take a roll call vote, please? Yes, Ms. Barry? Yes. Mr. Boncori? Yes. Mr. Matucci? Yes. Ms. Swope? Yes. Ms. Powell? Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, a couple of uh, updates for folks. Um, we are uh, pleased to be able to announce that combination with the town um, health department, Ms. Meredith Hurley, and our own COVID um, nurse lead, Tara Bui, here within the school district. Um, we are offering um, the Winter Public Schools COVID-19 vaccine clinic open to all Winter Public School students 12 years old uh, and above, as well as their immediate family members. The clinic hours are going to be uh, Wednesday, May 26th from 11.30 to 3.30. You have to make an appointment. Uh, we have sent out this week, um, I believe is it yesterday, and uh, again, Friday, and again um, this morning, uh, a, a link for folks, to all of our parents. We sent it K, pre-K through 12 in the event that there are folks who still need the vaccine to log on and make an appointment. It's the Pfizer vaccine. And so uh, thanks to Meredith and, and the uh, some other town offices uh, here at Town Hall, as well as our school staff, uh, that appointment link will be made available to all of our families and can extend um, for kids ages 12 and up, but also other household family members. Uh, for questions about that, you could call the EOC at 617-539-5837, or you could email your uh, student's principal if you did not get uh, an email or if you can't find the link, and we'll make sure that you are able to access that. So we're excited about that. Certainly it is not mandatory in case anyone wants to know. Uh, however, it is uh, an offer and a commitment to our uh, getting that vaccine out to as many people who need it in, in, a, in a convenient manner. So thank you to Meredith and the rest of the folks in her department uh, for working with Tara and our school nurses to, to pull that together. Uh, just another show of, of good collaboration between the town and the school. Some updates to, um, I know folks are all aware of the mask wearing changes on May 19th. There was an update uh, as well to graduation guidance. Mr. Crombie and some other folks from the high school and myself met to go through uh, the updated guidance around graduation, which is reflective of the changes that we made in the state. Um, so we have put that out and just a few um, snippets of what that's going to allow us to do. We are having an outdoor graduation at Miller Field. So when you're outdoors, uh, new guidance, students are not required to wear masks and we should be distancing as feasible. We always try to maintain, even outdoors, the three foot distancing. Effective, the, and these are effective May 29th. Uh, attendees and staff are not required to wear masks. However, the distance from other individuals who are not in their household as feasible. We're communicating that information to all of our families and attendees at graduation. And you're also uh, encouraged to wear face masks if in fact you have not been vaccinated. 
So at graduation, you will have uh, signage and on our campus and material to encourage people who uh, are not vaccinated to please wear a mask. Uh, we will not be um, polling people as they come in. Um, we're expecting folks will uh, abide by those rules and uh, keep everyone safe. And graduation um, this year will include uh, six family members from each student. Uh, so those uh, parents have been notified about that. And we are continuing under the guidance of the Department of Education to limit um, the actual um, graduation ceremony, making it as, as short as possible, uh, which we will do. We have included some additional guests this year. Last year, we didn't have any delegates and visitors. We didn't have a lot of teaching staff. Um, we kept it very minimal. And this year, we have certainly opened it up to our school committee to attend. Um, we have uh, six family members from each student's uh, home and our students. So we're pleased one that will be able to see the face of each one of our students uh, that's accepting their, their diploma or certificate of attainment. And, um, you know, that will be able to see parents' faces if they so chose. But people are allowed to wear a mask uh, if they would like to, and that will be supported by us. Our bathroom facilities uh, are up and running, and those will be uh, cleaned routinely throughout the event. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, graduation. I provided you in your packet um, just with some frequently asked questions that came out from the Department of Education about the changes from the state. As you know, those changes came about relatively quickly, uh, and school districts, not just Winthrop, but districts of school districts across the Commonwealth, um, had to make adjustments in a lot of things, such as mask wearing policies, as you uh, saw tonight. Um, I'd like to report from our principals that our kids continue, um, you know, to be epic in terms of their response to what we're doing. Um, they're allowed now not to have to wear a mask out to recess uh, or when doing outside school activities, whether it's phys ed outside or uh, a class that goes outside and, and conducts uh, a portion of their education uh, just sitting outside in one of our fields or out in the uh, playground of the school. Um, students who need to wear masks, parents have been in contact with teachers. We have a, a lot of our students whose parents want them to continue to wear masks, and we support that, uh, and we encourage that. Um, adults are still wearing masks in the school. Students still have to wear masks in the school, uh, but outdoor activities, uh, we're getting a breath of fresh air, for lack of a better term, uh, and our kids have been super compliant uh, with that, um, and I think they appreciate it. Uh, quite a bit, and gym and recess has taken on a whole nother level of happiness uh, beyond the fact that they're just not sitting. And that's pretty much it for me um, for tonight. I think the next school committee meeting will have a lot about our student accomplishments, um, and we'll be excited to report uh, all of that at our next school committee meeting. Wonderful, thank you. Do we have any personnel tonight? Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Pope. Jen, um, a, a question for Lisa. Yes. Um, will, has, has there been any discussion about whether vaccines will be required in September or later as they are for other types of um, problems? I mean, so sure, the Department of Education, we had a meeting last week with the commissioner um, and some of the big topics and questions the superintendents um, are just that. Are, is the state going to be requiring, um, like they had done earlier in the past year with flu vaccines, and then they recoiled on that? Um, does the department think that that is going to be a requirement? And the second big question on the table for all of the superintendents and, and teachers, do we think masks are going to be required in September indoor? Uh, the answer to both of those questions is we are not sure yet. <laughs> so it's just another uh, item that we are waiting on the Department of Education uh, to make a decision on. As of right now, there's, I believe the recommendation um, of the Department of Education on mask wearing, um, they are not recommending a lifting of that as of yet inside school buildings, but that could all change. As you could see with the changes that have been made recently, it could be changed on a Tuesday and we get informed on a Tuesday. 
So I will keep the committee up to date as soon as I have any information on that. Thank you. Um, I have a question as well. Yeah. If you're graduating, typically we've had um, eighth grade moving on ceremonies and fifth grade moving on ceremonies for those students. Um, and um, You have that wind sound back, and I couldn't hear anything that was yeah, just. I couldn't either. Sorry. I don't know where that the wind sound is coming from. So the question was um, from Julie um, whether or not any of the activities beyond graduation and senior activities were um, going to have any change on the in-person um, attendance. As of as of right now, uh, we have not changed anything beyond the senior class and graduation. Related to, and I'm not looking at you because I'm trying to look at the camera, but um, in, in terms of um, uh, lessening any of the restrictions on indoor, as of right now, students, when you're participating in an indoor activity, uh, such as classroom activity, you still need to wear a mask, you still need to be three feet apart. The Department of Education's guidance that we have been following um, is anything indoor beyond our students. Um, and they continue to recommend that there are six, there is six feet, a six foot distance held between non family members, um, and that they are discouraging indoor activities and encouraging things to take place outside. In terms of the elementary, uh, sorry, middle school, um, there are activities that take place at the middle school that are school driven, such as our award ceremony, eighth grade award ceremony, which is different than some of the traditional activities, like the eighth grade moving on dance that's sponsored by the PTO. Uh, those are being talked about actually tonight at a PTO meeting um, and are still um, up for, for discussion. I believe at this point, Mr. Curley was planning for the award ceremony, which is something that takes place during the school day for the eighth graders to be a student only activity because we need to hold it in uh, the Shapiro Auditorium in which we could physically not fit all of our students at three feet apart if their parents came because then we would need to move those groups of people to a six foot distance because it would be outside people coming into the school which would require us to do the six foot distancing. Um, he still uh, is working on that with Marita Perley and Tara um, and, and taking some feedback and, and consideration. So we hope to have some answers uh, on that tomorrow. In terms of our indoor facilities, um, the gym, or renting out any space to anyone, uh, we decided back, I think in March of last year, to sort of put a moratorium because of COVID on letting any rentals happen or use of any of the indoor facilities. We did a temporary change just for Miller Field through June 30th. Um, so as of right now, uh, given the continued restrictions of with COVID mask wearing and distancing inside school buildings, uh, that remains the same uh, for right now. So I look forward to hearing um, about Mr. Curley's meeting tonight with the PTO. They were looking at some creative planning. Um, so I believe that's where we stand with any activities as of right now, if that makes sense. Yep. Okay. I talk, I've talked about this more times today, so yeah. I was rambling a little bit, but I was trying to remember everything I talked to a bunch of different people about. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none, do we have personnel matters tonight? We do. Um, we have no appointments. We do have a resignation of uh, a teacher to take effect at the end of this school year, and that's Ms. Talia Bonapani. She is a therapeutic program teacher at the Arthur P. Cummings School. Um, we do not have any retirements. And the postings that we have are uh, kitchen workers for the middle school, school cafeteria. We have the elementary assistant principal job, and that is at the Arthur P. Cummings School, and that is a result of uh, Mrs. O'Leary uh, being appointed as the principal. So uh, that job has been posted, and they will be putting together a committee of people uh, to be introduced to that position. And ELA, uh, ELA and math teachers for our summer program. This is the regular education summer program as well as 
our extended school year program for students with special needs. So we have asked to post those uh, teaching positions as well as ESP positions. And we've also uh, posted the athletic coaching positions for next fall and next winter. Um, Mr. Serino is always two seasons ahead of the game, uh, which really confuses me at the end of the school year. But those fall and winter athletic uh, coaching positions have been have been posted as well. And we have no uh, request for any leave of absence at this time. Thank you. Immediate next to math policies have been taken care of. Uh, unfinished business to keep the pay scale. We've addressed in policy subcommittee of Lisbon. Do we have any other matters? Then I will ask for motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay, Mr. Marcucci, a second. Second by Mr. Barry. May I have a roll call vote? Yes, Ms. Barry. Yes. Mr. Boncori? Yes. Mr. Matucci? Yes. Ms. Swope? Yes. Ms. Powell? Yes. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.